Something that's often said about the Les Paul is that it's not a very versatile instrument. That if you want a versatile guitar, you want to be looking more at something like a Strat, maybe a PRS, um, and that the Les Paul is very, very good at the sound. That it, you know, it creates a very good sound, but it, but it is quite limited. Um, so in this video, I wanted to challenge that a little bit. Les Paul is my number one guitar, has been for many years. It's my go-to. Um, so when I hear the the argument that it's not very versatile, I think that's not necessarily true. First thing to consider here is the Les Paul has been used in almost every genre of music you can imagine. Certainly, you know, every genre that would, would use a guitar, electric guitar. You see it used very clean in pop. Les Paul himself was a was a pretty clean jazz player. It's more recently been made very popular uh, and famous by heavier rock bands, players like Jimmy Page and Slash, and no end of bands from from the sixties and seventies up to today. You also see it used in pop music, session players. So I think right off the bat, it's it's apparent that the Les Paul's not a one trick pony that can only be used in you know, this this narrow scope. That said, I also think it's important to judge every guitar on its own merits. So if you're looking at, um, say a Strat, which has a longer scale length, has three pickups, single coil pickups, um, of course the Strat is versatile. I'm not not in this video to say that the Les Paul is more versatile than the Strat or better than the Strat. I have a Strat behind me, it's, it's a great guitar. And the Strat's earned its reputation over many years of, of being versatile, of being able to do you know, almost anything you want it to do. Uh, and of course it's got, it's got three pickups, it's got the five-way selector switch, so you can kind of get in between, um, in between the three pickups, to into positions what they call two and four. So the Strat's very, very versatile. This isn't about comparing one to the other. It's about judging every guitar on its own merit. If you want the Les Paul to be like a Strat, you're setting the guitar up for failure and, and you're setting yourself up for disappointment. And likewise, if you want your Strat to sound like a Les Paul, you know, it's the same problem. So what it, what is it that appeals to you about the model? What is it you're trying to achieve? Uh, and that's, that has to be your starting point. Now, as to whether it's a limited instrument, um, the thing for me that I think is important are the four knobs here. And this is one of the reasons I love the Les Paul. Obviously, it's not the only guitar with that. There are other factors I like about this particular instrument. But this particular configuration, where you have a dedicated volume and a dedicated tone for each pickup, really lets you control and shape that sound in ways that not every guitar allows, including the Strat, including the Telecaster, um, including certain PRS models where you have a master tone and or a master volume. So let's give an example of why that's nice. Let's say, let's say I'm using the bridge pickup for, for let's say you know, the chorus, the leads, for something that's a bit heavier where you'd normally use an overdrive pedal. And then on the chorus, um, sorry for the verse, which we'll do on the next pickup, we want it to be a bit cleaner, a bit softer. Okay, so we'll start on that, on that neck. It's cleaner. Then we want it to go a bit heavier. So just my setup here is the guitar, cable, amp, which is on a crunch setting. There's no pedals, I'm not, I've not got a boost on or anything. So by cleaning that guitar up, that's all in, that's all in the changing the pickups. So, and of course you can do that on, on other guitars, but when you've got a volume dedicated to each pickup like that, you can be on a, you can, you can set that up at the beginning of a song 
if you're on stage or whatever. Um, and to change between the two is just, just changing the pickup. Um, so I find that by having it dedicated like that, you can say, okay, I know I want this one about halfway, I want this one about nine or 10, and, and then you just switch between them. That's a really convenient thing to do. So that's one thing I love about the, what you often see on Gibsons or these style of guitars is, is having the four knobs there. That's really versatile. So let's, let's just, yeah, and a word on that. I think a lot of players, and I've, I've been this person, no judgment from me, um, but a lot of players admit to doing this, where they just stick it on 10, and then uh, so stick the guitar on 10, try and adjust the amp to get the tones that you want, and then, and then don't change it from there. I think if you do that, of course, if you're happy with the tone you get, then, then that's great. But if you never if you never change these, then it stands to reason that you're not going to be getting the most from it. You're not going to be exploring the full range of what the guitar is capable of. Any guitar, not just the Les Paul. So I think it's important to to you know spend a little bit of time and get get familiar with what the guitar can do. So um, if we start with ten here, volumes on ten, tones on ten, we'll just do the the, neck, the, the bridge pickup for now. You know, and it's We'll just play a few chords. It's quite bright. There's the distortion on there. If we roll the tone back but leave the volume on 10, we'll put that up to about 5. Same kind of grittiness, but it's uh, slightly warmer because we've, we've pulled the tone back, so it's taking some of that brightness off. For comparison, okay, so if we take that back to one. Now let's roll the volume back. So I've rolled it back from 10 to 8.5 and straight away in the room it's taken just some of that, that top end off. Some of that harshness, so let's compare that again. Just a slice, it's the same, same kind of tone, the same crunch, um, but it's just taking away some of that, that bite, if you like. Now, if we roll that back to seven. It's got the same uh, snap to the tone, but it's, it's cleaned up. Let's leave that on five and also roll the tone back to match it at five. It's slightly warmer than before. We'll take the tone, pretty much take the tone completely off. A bit more volume to compensate. Pretty clean sound. You wouldn't really know that there's a crunch settling on that. That's quite helpful. If you want to do a solo, for example, where you start off clean, it's quite warm, quite slow, and then you, you build that solo up. You just introduce that tone, you cut volume. <laughs> thick because you've got the tone down. So just on the 
sun pickup, the higher output, brighter pickup, you can see that just changing these two knobs here, there's quite a bit going on if you want it to be. And this is before blend in the effects, before putting a boost on, before putting an overdrive pedal on, um, with no yeah, volume pedal, this is all just using using the knobs here. And if we take that back to, let's say two, we'll leave the tone up to about seven. Again, quite clean, it's nice. the same thing on the neck pickup. So the neck pickup on the Les Paul is what receives a lot of criticism, I guess is, is the word for it. Um, not that people necessarily think it's a bad position, but um, it has a reputation for being boomy and muddy. And I think yeah, if you're a player that puts everything on 10 and you're in a distorted amp, then yeah, having everything on 10 and trying to play power chords or like the open E, you are running the risk of running into that. I mean, yeah, the, you can run into that. But what if you don't have everything on 10? If you just roll that back. So this is on 10. Nice. Between eight and a half and nine, we've just taken taken the, the the very peak of that pickup down. So just kind of remove that bit there. Just taken the the peak of that pickup off. So again, we can keep keep going. Get the down to about seven. not what you'd call boomy or muddy uh, but certainly on this this particular guitar these are unpotted custom buckers so they're they're low output um, you know and of course again going back to my original point you have to treat every guitar in its merit it, you know the Les Paul I've got beside me here um, has higher output pickups so you'd have to you know the settings wouldn't be identical for the for the pair of them um, but using the volume control to clean up to remove the peak um, the peak frequencies for both pickups really and then the tone again the tone I consider it largely a brightness control so the, the volumes on 10 and I'm, I'm just uh, exaggerating you know, the, the extremes of this pickup just by putting the tone from 10 to zero so volumes on 10 woman tone um, so we'd roll that tone back roll the volume back a bit down to two or three if we clean that up nice let's take that back to three volume on three tones back open
So it's cleaned right up. Obviously, it's quiet to turn the volume down, but it's cleaned right up. In the room, I don't know how this will translate on video. In the room, it's there's an acoustic quality. I'm not saying it sounds like an acoustic guitar. You're not going to fall in love with that. But there's an acoustic quality to it, um, and it's got some of that snap of the of the that we had on earlier on on the neck pickup, the bridge pickup. Sorry. <laughs> Put a little bit more volume back in, let's say four and a half. That's not what you'd, anyone would call a boomy, muddy pickup. It's nice and articulate, even on the bass string. So that's just the two pickups. So, okay, this is where one of the main criticisms of the Les Paul, you know, in terms of versatility, like I mentioned earlier, the Strat has three pickups and a five way selector switch. So you can use all three pickups and then two in between positions. Now, first glance, the Les Paul doesn't have that. You've got one pickup, two pickups, and a three way selector switch. So you can choose the neck pickup, the bridge pickup, or in between. So you have three positions to choose from. But like I just demonstrated, having the four controls gives you a lot of, of versatility there. Um, and again, that's not limited to the Les Paul. You know, you, you can, tweaking the knobs on any of your guitar will, will bring a lot more out of it. But I think one consideration, there's a lot of players just don't do that. A lot of players will openly admit they stick it all on 10 and then they use pedals and the amp to shape the tone. So I think if you if your sending your guitar is limited or not very versatile or a one trick pony, that's really a judgment to make once you spend, you know, not that long, 10, 20, 30 minutes really getting used to it. If you're turning all these and, and the sound isn't changing, then yeah, it's not a very versatile guitar. But one of the things I love about the Les Paul is this middle position. It's just you could spend all day in the middle position and it's because you can blend the two pickups to your liking. So let's say, um, this is why, you know, a lot of other guitars feel like a compromise to me. I own the Strat, I own the Tele, I sold it. I've just sold my PRS. The PRS was probably the most versatile guitar I've ever owned because it had two humbucker pickups like the Les Paul does, but it had a five-way selector switch. So it had um, neck, middle, bridge, just with the Les Paul, and then two coil split options like the Strat, very versatile, but it only had the two knobs, one master volume, one master tone, so you, if you're in the middle here, you can just shape it however you want, you know, you don't, you could spend your whole playing time in this position, so everything on 10. <laughs> So basically the game you're playing, you can change the influence of each pickup. So this is everything on 10, both pickups are putting their full amount into it. If I wanted to take away some brightness, I might want to take off the tone from the bridge. So take that down to five. Too thick, let's bring some more tone in, about four. Okay, now let's remove some volume. So it's on 10, the bridge pickup is on 10 volume. Let's take it down to eight. Let's see what the neck brings to this. So the 
Tones on 10 on the neck, let's take that to 5. <laughs> That is back to that acoustic quality that I mentioned before. And it's one of my favourite favourites on the Les Paul, and you may have to, you know, this is just on this guitar. Um, you can tweak yours for everything here on six or four, four on six as a pickup uh, sorry as a, as a finger style it's, it's a nice blend of um, some snap it's not too overdriven but it's not completely clean and certainly in the room you can just hear a subtle um, a subtle low end just in the background there's a hint of a, of a quack in there. Again, we can manipulate what's, what's in there. Let's turn the bridge up to eight. Once you know the characteristics of your, of your pickups, it makes it easy to, to decide what you want to change here in the middle position. Um, you know, at the most basic level, we know that the neck has, has the warmth and the bridge has the brightness. So if you wanted to remove the influence of one or the other, you know, you, you just use one of the four tones, the one of the four knobs, sorry. So if we were to take the tone for the neck completely out, To my ears, that's quite a drastic change in tone, and it's just from rolling one knob from zero to ten. Let's try that again. So, a lot more sparkles added into that. And so we can take out the everything on 10 and then we'll remove the neck down to one. bridge down to seven. Now it's a bit too quiet so we might want to put some of that neck back in because that's almost off. Nice clean chimey sound. Um, now if we wanted to take, let's see what the neck tone does. So it's on 10 right now so in theory that's the brightest it's going to be and if we roll that back it's going to warm the tone up now if we want that to be still warmer we can take off some of the bridge tone which is also on 10 again that's going to be the most bright let's manipulate the neck again just from um, 10 to say 7 on the neck mm -hmm. 
tones to one, both volumes to ten. It's a very warm pitch. Now let's take out some of the neck volume because again that's the warm low end pickup. Okay, so we've removed the, the volume aspect, like the boominess, but it's too warm. So let's Introduce some of that neck tone, which is currently a zero. Let's put that to five. Bit better, up to ten. Because there's a bit more clarity, breathing room coming in, but it's still very um, almost muffled. So if we introduce some of the tone from the bridge, that'll really add some more sparkle in. Straight away. That's just on two and a half. Some more. Five. So there we have it. I mean, the, the, the middle position, uh, Les Paul, there's so much going on. Uh, and of course, you can you can shape that further by everything you'd normally do on the amp and your effects pedals or um, the pickups you have will be different. Like I said before, you can um, play around with the heights of the pickup with the pole pieces. If you wanted to, you could, you could add a coil um, split in there. So the Les Paul I've got beside me is that a 2013 standard and in those years Gibson um, added some more features to it so each of the four knobs here is a push-pull so um, the both pickups have coil split under under a push a pull uh, one of them is also an out of phase in the middle position that famous Peter Green sound um, and the fourth one is a is a it bypasses all these settings and goes straight to the jack plate so on the bridge so basically it's uh imagine you had everything on 10 on the bridge that's what that that does which is great because you can have all the settings for your rhythms and and certain parts of a song that maybe aren't on 10 and then it gets to a point where you just want to go full throttle on it lift that knob up straight there push it back down again and, it, and it's whatever these are set to so there's how a Les Paul is stock, which is what this guitar is. Uh, and then of course there are modifications you can make or, or models of the Les Paul that you can buy that already have those modifications in them. But the point is, um, this is a Boss Katana amp, so it's not like we're playing through a very expensive, um, top of the range kind of amp. And I've got it on the panel setting, so if you're not familiar with this amp, what that means is it's just like using it like a regular amp. So this amp has lots of effects distortions, modulations, everything built in, but none of them are turned on. I've got it on the crunch channel, um, on a 0 0.5 watt setting, because the, the rim I'm in, um, and, no, and no effects. Uh, and, and using that, we can nice and clean. To more, more crunch. Um, so, in my opinion, the Les Paul is a versatile instrument. Um, that's again not an argument for saying that it will definitely do what you, in particular, need it to do on any given night. You know, it's not necessarily the most versatile guitar in the world, but it is versatile. I think it can do more than many people say it can do. Um, which you know is why it's been used by so many players across so many genres over so many years because you can you can do what you need it to do and of course there have been so many models of it over the years um you can get them in different weights this is this is 
believe it or not, one of the it's one of the lightest guitars I own, if not the lightest. Every time I take it off the wall, I'm amazed at how light it is. Um, it's not much over eight pounds. I've not weighed all the guitars, but the point is, you know, Les Pauls have the reputation as being boat anchors and very heavy and hurt, hurting your shoulders and things. And, you know, some of them are very heavy. You can get them in excess of 10 or 11, sometimes even 12 pounds, um, but they're not all there. This is just over eight. Um, so you can get them in different weights. You can change the pickups. You can find them where Gibson's already put um, coil spit pickups in, where they've already put different wiring options. Um, you can get them with different neck sizes. You know, there's a lot of variation here. And, and some of the models even had a, a boost, a decibel boost. So if it comes to your solo or some lead lines, you just flip a switch or, or pull the knob out, however they implemented it and you get a little boost on board. So uh, for me, they're more versatile than, than a lot of people give them credit for. And if you're looking for a new guitar, if you have a Les Paul and you've just got everything on 10 and you think it can't do as much as your other guitars, just you know, a few minutes playing around with the knobs, you'll see that actually it cleans up really nicely. In the middle position in particular, you can shape that to get really nice, clean, kind of glassy sounds. Um, you can you can find sort of hints of the, the quack that, that the Strat's known for. Again, the Les Paul's not going to sound like the Strat, but you can just get hints of that influence. Um, you know, there's a lot there. Having the four knobs is is sort you know an exaggeration, but it's like a superpower as a as a player looking for tone. You've got so much on board without having to go external to amps and pedals for certain elements of the tone a lot more nuance on board um, and probably the player who's who's done so much to demonstrate this is Joe Bonamassa he's got more than one video showing um, the range of tones on a Les Paul just just here uh, so if, if it's of interest to you I definitely suggest looking those up and play around with it and if you if you haven't got a Les Paul but you considering one or you're going guitar shopping and you're, and you're trying to decide what to look for and hopefully this video has given you some inspiration to try one and and put any preconceptions leave them at the door just plug it in play around with it um, and see where it goes and of course I think another thing as a final point it does respond better I think guitars respond better when it's not full-on gain so if you go in for an all-out balls to the wall high output pickups, heavy gain, pedals, distortion pedals, and that's your tone, then you know, find the guitar that's best to that, and then um, these probably become, um, they have less input than, these are low output pickups, I generally prefer lower output pickups, um, so if you're looking to see what a guitar can do, you know, you, you don't want to have all the gain on, all that saturation on, put it all back a bit, that's where you get the guitar's real kind of versatility, the, the depth of character if you like um, and then turn all the pedals on and, and put this onto the onto the brown sound and and all the rest of it but um, yeah if, you, if you're trying to just see what a guitar can do try and have things on the cleaner side uh, and then you'll find that it, it opens up so much more so I hope this video has been helpful I hope it's given you some new perspective on on the Les Paul and what it can do and um, let me know, let me know if you think it deserves that reputation.